Hello and welcome to my tutorial where you will learn how to create a particle system inside a 3D shape with NVIDIA Flex. Give it an amazing look like this one here and also learn how to make it easily interactive. Let me give you first a little overview over, over the network. The left part here is the NVIDIA Flex system with its emitters, our 3D object and also the force control. Next to it is our render setup, inclusive some controls to create rotating path for camera and lights. This is very useful in general, not only for this project. After that we do some top work with feedback and coloring techniques to make it look very interesting. It's very easy to change colors manually with the PBR material and feedback edge comp or otherwise let the noise stop create some random colors for us. We will also add some options to interact with the particles by mouse input, but this can be easily changed to other inputs like Kinect or any other job data. So let's start from scratch, delete everything and start fresh by adding the NVIDIA Flex Comp and two actor comps. Name one emitter and the other one shape. Inside the emitter create a sphere sop Set its primitive type to Polygon and the frequency on the details tab to 1. If you leave it to another primitive type like Mesh, the performance will suffer a lot, so make sure to change it. Don't forget to turn on the Render and Display Flex. Go to the Flex tab of the emitter and set Flex type to Fluid Emitter, Emission Size to 3 and 3. And depending on the volume of your 3D object, the max emission particles to something between maybe 5 and 50,000. But no worries, this can easily be changed later on. Inside the shape actor, add your desired 3D model. The ohm symbol that I use here is linked in the description and free to download. But you can also import your own model or create a SOP. With some 3D objects, I got an error message saying something about too many vertices per primitive. In that case, you can connect a tree, tree strip SOP and then a convert SOP to your model. This should fix the problem. If you still have problems and it doesn't work, well, I don't know, try another 3D model. Under the general page of your shape actor, I set kinematic state and uh, to static and the collision shape to concave, static only. This way our 3D shape doesn't get affected by the physics inside the flex simulation. Alright, now we add the keyboard in shop with the keys 1234 and re reference it to the flex solver, emitter and shape actors. That way we can quickly reset the simulation. Reference 1 and 2 to emitter and shape actors, 3 and 4 to the flex solver. If you need more emitters than one, then make copies of the emitter now because uh, the ohm symbol that I use is divided in three parts, I will need three emitters. Okay, let's create a basic render setup with the camera, light and render top to see what's going on here. Set your desired resolution, in my case it's full HD, and move the camera back or around to have the 3D object in view. Also create a null top after the render, activate display flag and put it somewhere far on the right side. Next we need to place the emitters inside the different parts of our 3D object, so the particles get spawned there. We can open a second pane and choose Geometry Viewer to see, to see it better. Go to the XForm page of the emitter and move it till it's inside your object. As I have three parts, I move one emitter to each part. Depending on the size of your 3D shape, you can variate the maximum emission particles. In my case, I set the small emitter to 5000, the second one to 10,000 and for the biggest part of the 3D shape to 50,000. After you place them correctly, go inside the emitter actors and set the radio to 0.005, so we get very small particles. The particles might just fall through your shape, but by tweaking some flex solver se settings we can fix it. 
While we are here already, let's set some more settings on the property page of the solver. Set the particle radius to 0.1. Activate clamp speed and clamp acceleration. Set both values to 10. Uh, the cohesion to 0, buoyancy to 1 for now, and the collision distance to 0.1. And the shape collision margin to 0 0.0001. This will fix the falling through particles. Of course, you can also play with the parameters to get different looks and behaviors, but for now I just leave it like that. Reset the simulation by pressing the keys 3, 4, 1, 2 uh, and the particles should stay inside your shape now. Okay, now let's give the particles some beautiful color and glow effects. First create a PBR mat and make it orange and drag it on each emitter to set it as a material. Insert a transform top, set the background color to 0001 and activate Comp over background color to get a black background. Add a feedback, edge, level and composite top. Connect the transform to it and set, oper and set the operation to over. Drag the composite back onto the feedback and adjust the edge settings to the following. Black level 0 0.03, strength 0 0.2, sample step 1.5. The opacity in the level top we set to 0.35. Okay, now let's add the feedback edge comp from the palette, a blur and also a switch top behind it. Set the edge color to some dark orange uh, and this will give us a nice golden look. The edge strength to 0.15 blur feedback to 2 and the hue shift to 0. The blur top we will adjust to these values, pre-shrink 1, filter size 10 and sample step 1.5. Cool. Connect the blur and composite top from before into the switch. Activate blend inputs and find a nice, a nice balance between the two inputs. For my likings 0.7 will do. That gives us enough detail, but also some nice blur. If you like to adjust the color manually with the PBR material and feedback edge comp, leave it, just leave it like that. But to get some random nice colors, create a noise top with a period of 8, harmonics all to 0, and animate it by typing apps time dot seconds times 0 0.01 uh, in some of the translate and rotate fields. Also, don't forget to set your resolution and turn off monochrome. Connect the noise and the switch to a composite, set it to chroma difference and we have already some nice looking particles. But we can make it look even more cool by adding some camera movement, rotating lights and after that add the outside material around the particles to get that glassy look that you saw in the beginning. So, create a particle swap somewhere over the render setup, set its division to 1000 and add three transform swaps with nulls after each one. Name them camera path, light path 1 and light path 2. For the camera path, rotate the x axis to minus 105, y to 3 and uniform scale it to 20. For light path 1, set the translate to 007, scale to 10. Light path 2, set the translate to 00 7 and scale to 10 as well. Underneath, add an LFO chop with a null and name it rotate. Set the type to ramp and the frequency to 0.045. Create the second light next to the other one. Change the translate values for both lights to 000. Now we can drag and drop the SOPs on our camera light 1 and light 2 into the path SOP field. In the camera, make sure to drag and drop the shape actor into the look at field. This way, the camera will also look at our 3D object. To get it all rotating now, reference the rotate value 
onto the position field for both the camera and lights. Alright, last part of our top system comes now. To add the shape of the 3D object around the particles, we need to make some changes in our render system. First, go to render 1 and write emitter, emitter 1 and emitter 2 in the geometry field, so it only renders our particles. Then we add a second render, also here don't forget to set the same resolution, like in render 1, and write shape or the name of your shape actor in the geometry field. This way it will, also, it will only render the 3D object. Create a format and use it as a material for the shape. Alright, connect render 2 to a level top and set the opacity to 0.55. Add a composite and connect both ends of the top net networks to it. Set to overlay and add the final level top with brightness 3 behind it. Depending on what style you want, you can also swap the operation order and set the opacity of the level top with the 3D shape to 0.75 and brightness of the last level top to 2. This way the shape glows over its boundaries. But I like the other look more. So it looks like glass. In this last and easy step, we create interactive forces. For that, we first need to add a force comp and place it somewhere over the emitter in the beginning. Drag and drop the container on the forces field on the bullet page of each emitter. Now on the force field tab of the force comp, activate both toggles and set the strength to minus 2 and radius to 5. Negative values pull particles inside the force field, while positive values push them away. Don't even bother to try out the force tab here, it doesn't work inside Nvidia Flex for some reason. Now you have to choose with what parameters you want to control the forces. I will use the mouse in chop, but you can also use data from a Kinect, LFO or any other chop data. So let's create the mouse in chop. Add two math chops to it and set the ranges from minus 1 and 1 to minus 10 and 10. On the second one, minus 0.5 and 0.5 to minus 10 and 10. Set your chop reference to the x and y translate parameters of the force comp. To make the force field visible, just add a sphere stop inside the force comp and activate the render and, and display flex. If you now open a second plane and switch it to geometry viewer, you are able to see where the for force field is. Another option to interact is to reference the chop data to the gravitational acceleration in the flex solver. Here you, you might want to lower the values a little bit by writing divide by 5 behind the reference expression. Don't forget to set the buoyancy to zero, otherwise the particles won't get affected by global gravity. It's also fun to play with the particle radius and buoyancy parameters on the properties page of the flex solver. You can use this technique with all suitable 3D shapes that have some space or volume inside them so that the particles can move around. It's also a nice technique for um, creating projection mapping content if you have a 3D model of your projection surface. Alright, have fun exploring this with your own shapes and particle settings and show your support by pressing that like button and follow my channel for more content. See you on the next tutorial. Peace out.